But can you just describe maybe in a little bit more detail, obviously not too much detail, but just a little bit more detail about hollowing and bracing? Yeah, hollowing was uh, this uh, term that came from Australia. And uh, the theory was that people with back pain have a delayed onset of a, of a core muscle called transverse abdominis. Mm -hmm. So the way to isolate the muscle to train it was to think about drawing in your navel towards your spine. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, there's, there's a lot of problems with that. And first of all, not all back, pa back pain patients have, have this perturbed muscle. And in fact, it turns out very few do. So it, it's, it, it's, it's not worthy of following up for that particular reason with uh, in a discussion of training yeah. but then this thing took on a life of its 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 own this concept I was uh, working with different Olympic squads from different countries and I heard the coach say you know come on lads draw in your abdominal wall and then we're gonna go and lift or draw before you start to run or it was just so bastardized as right. as a concept. Yeah. And and that that wasn't it at all. Your the, the core is is based on a system of guy wires. All of the muscles around the spine and core stiffen. Uh, if we were talking about abdominally stiffing, I, I'm just talking about pretend you're going to be, you know, whacked in the belly, and you would uh, you you would you would perform that stiffening maneuver. So there's a brace, mm -hmm. but the trick then is to tune the stiffening or the bracing to the task. And uh, y you know, when you look at a, an Olympic lifter, for example, they inhale uh, air to about seventy percent of maximum lung volume, somewhere in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and then they compress, they depress, and pull their shoulders and rib cage down to their pelvis, almost putting on a synthetic compression suit, if you want to think of it that way. Yeah. So there, there, there's a high level of bracing for an Olympic lift. Versus, we might be talking one of your clients who gets out of a chair and experiences back pain in the sit-to-stand maneuver. Mm -hmm. So there the trick would be lift the rib cage up just a little bit, stiffen the core mildly, maybe a 5% contraction, mm -hmm. lean forward through the hips, transferring the weight onto the feet, and stand up by pulling the hips through. Yeah. Then let the brace go. Sure. So do you see, it, but bracing, I mean, I, I read these criticisms, oh, McGill just squeezes the hell out of everybody with bracing, and, and again, mm -hmm. they don't understand the work. Yeah. It's all about tuning that stiffness yeah. and controlling uh, positions. Yeah. So that uh, the tissues that are pain producing um, are are buttressed. Yeah. So it's as if it if it, it's as if it's like a pulse. So it's done at the start of the movement. So as you're about to initiate the the lift or the stand from the seat to standard position, it's as if you're just sort of using that five percent just to initiate a pulse, and then it as you stand, it begins to relax itself. But that may. That may <laughs> No, you know, if if we were training uh, your mom, for example, to get out of the chair, I would hold on five percent and just teach that stiffness. Yeah, all the way through. All the way through. Yeah. But when we get into pulsing, now we're talking about power production. Right. So if you were kicking, punching, throwing something like that, or hitting a golf ball, mm -hmm. you used that example earlier. That very much is a pulse. Yeah. So uh, you know, I've I've measured uh, the the woman who's hit a golf ball. She won the world long drive championship. I've measured uh, uh, her male counterpart in uh, men's golf, and I've measured some pretty good golfers. And what they do is, uh, you know, you won't find a great, big, strong rugby player who can hit a golf ball very far. And the reason is they're too strong, too stiff, and they don't pulse. Mm -hmm. Whereas the golfers are quite compliant. They don't have much stiffness, nor do they use much strength as they're winding out of the back swing, swinging the club down to hit the ball. But at that instant of ball contact, they absolutely do pulse. You yeah. can measure it through the, uh, the, the... That's why they wear spikes, to spike into the ground, transmit that pulse up through the external rotators of the of the trailing hip so they're driving it with glutes glute medius and then they let the pulse go after the ball has left the club for a faster uh, follow through so do you see how that that's a pulse power production sure sure Dif yeah. diff different than getting out of a chair